Hi everybody! Well, as you can see, the weather in Belgium is miserable and it was miserable yesterday and it was miserable the day before that and it's been miserable for months. And today it's even more miserable than that on my birthday, so that really sucks. Anyway, uh, there's only one upside of this kind of weather and that is that it's excellent game development weather. So let's have a look at how the Belgium climate has affected the development of Divinity Dragon Commander. Follow me! Hey Octav, what are you doing? Hey, I'm um, going through the single player of Dragon Commander mm -hmm. so I can make some save games for other guys that they can really uh, look at certain parts of the game. Did you find something that was particularly shocking as you were going through it? Uh, this, for example. <laughs> yes, I but can. I found but out the people don't know about this yet, so we're not going to tell them either. Yeah. Anyway, hi Lorian. Hey, how's it going? Very good, thanks. What are you doing? I'm actually writing the manual for Dragon Commander. There's a lot of skills and spells to list, so uh, I'll be busy for quite a while. So it basically means that the game is almost feature complete, right? It is pretty much feature complete, yeah. Okay, cool. Let's move on. Great. Thank you. Hey, Thomas. Hi. What are you doing? I am uh, finishing up on the Dragon skill loadout screen. Okay, so that's uh, one of the last interfaces, I think, right? It should be, yes. Yeah. So Thomas has been redesigning all of the user interfaces, now that we know more or less everything that is in the game. And uh, it's probably, I think, one of the last bottlenecks in uh, releasing Dragon Commander. Bottleneck. Yeah, I like uh, being called a bottleneck. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> Hi, Joel. What are you doing except looking at yourself in the mirror? <laughs> Hi. Uh, well, I'm actually looking at the eyes, uh, seeing if they look into the camera. It's a really small detail, but it, it gives so much to the game. So uh, I'm doing that. Okay, so why do you need the mirror? Uh, well, um, the characters have expressions and when putting up the expressions we need to look at ourselves and uh, you know, see how an expression is formed and then we, we translate that to the game. Okay, well that's pretty cool. <laughs> okay, well, thank you. Let's finish it up. Let's have a look at your uh, lead. Hey Thierry. Yeah, was fun. What are you doing? Well, I'm making sure all the final uh, motion capture of the characters are uh, being implemented, everything is polished and uh, yeah, that it looks fine. We just have a little bit of bug fixing depending on uh, what we get from beta and uh, QA. Okay. So, uh, we're almost there. Almost there. Thank you, Thierry. Almost there. You heard it here first. <laughs> hey, Benoit. Hello. What are you doing? Working on the manufacturing and the localization right now. You look very relaxed, actually. I would have expected you to be more stressed. You usually are more stressed on these uh, kind of things. Yes, it starts to ramp up. Okay, so what's the, your, your big problem at this moment? Uh, it's the timeline to put the localization and the manufacturing together mm -hmm. to ship to all the partners and put it on the shelves. Okay, so basically it's getting the games translated in time and make sure that what's translated is in the box yes. in all the countries where we're shipping all at the same date. Okay, well, Benoit, producer. He is working on the boxes, he's working on the integration of localization. It means we're really near the end, almost. Almost. Alright, thank you Benoit. Thank you. Hello Lawrence. Hello Sam. What are you doing? Um, now doing the notification center. It means that you're gonna know what everybody's doing at a certain time in the game. So you know what people are moving around, etc. So it's basically like uh, Farang invaded that country, exactly. that kind of stuff. Okay. Or Lawrence played that card. Okay, so that makes sense to me. Yeah. And uh, do you still have a lot of work on your task list? Uh, it's shrinking very fast, so no, it's going pretty well. Yes. Okay. If even the programmer is smiling, we're really nearing the end. <laughs> Alright, thank you, Lawrence. No problem. Let's have a look at Ken. Kenster, how's it going? Uh, it's okay, I guess. I see a fantastic Check. smiley in there. Is that going to ship? <laughs> is that Ken Art? That's Ken Art, uh, they call it. Yeah. I'm uh, reworking the prepare battle uh, UI. Mm -hmm. We're reworking it so that the flow is better. This is for the uh, to decide who is going to lead in battle. Is it going to be one of the generals? Is it going to be you as a dragon? Or are you going to leave the army up to its own resources, right? Yeah, with the militia. And you can also play the extra cards. Card. So do you have a lot of work left, Cam? Yes. <laughs> he is the true bottleneck. Yeah, okay. No. All right, here is all of us counting on Ken. Thank you, Ken. Right. Hi, boss. Hello. What are you doing? Um, currently, I'm working on uh, the dragon skills and fixing them because they're not working with the cards and combat. No, no, no. Um, uh, well, there's a problem with the card playing when you go to combat. You can play a dragon card and then you have an extra skill for one turn. Yeah. 
and that's not working? No, not at the moment, no. Okay. So what are the main tasks that you still have uh, on your list? Uh, Buzz is working on the gameplay, by the way. Yeah, and mostly on the strategy map. It's almost feature complete. Um, so there are a couple of bugs mm -hmm. I have to fix. Okay, so again, bug fixing, feature complete. That's really good. Okay, thank you, Buzz. Yeah, no problem. All right. Let's go to the real bottleneck here. Hello, Farang. Hello. Rumor has it that you're depressed because you're not going to make it. Well, that might be true. Um, <laughs> uh, we're, no, no, we're actually doing okay. The problem at this point is that uh, making the levels uh, takes a long time, and uh, we're trying to guarantee that people really uh, enjoy themselves in okay. the RTS combat and the Dragon gameplay. So, um, this is actually one of our uh, major remaining bottlenecks that we're working on right now. We have single-player levels, and we have multiplayer levels, obviously. And so, um, this is a very complex game, and so we have to balance what happens in the levels towards the gameplay. Uh, on the board, the Raven and the uh, strategy map. So this is a strategy map. Uh, basically, this is the map for the first chapter of the game. Mm -hmm. And each one of these countries needs to have a unique combat level. So in case combat uh, happens there, we want people to have a uh, different level to play in or a different setup or a different scenario. So um, we're going to need a lot of levels. And uh, that's, that's, at this point, uh, the main bottleneck. OK, so there you have it. That is, he's the bottleneck. The bottle. <laughs> hey Kun. Hi Sven. What are you doing? I'm working on the terrain at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have uh, terrains from design and I'm actually beefing them up a bit. Yeah. So yeah, what do you mean with beefing up? Well, I'm uh, working on the erosion so that, um, as you can see here, this is a low res render actually mm -hmm. of the terrain, but it gives already a good idea of how the erosion will be, where the, the beaches will be, and what kind of texturing we want on this. So that's the only thing you have to do? No, I also worked on uh, the cover of Dragon Commander, made these little tiny mock-ups. Ah, yeah, yeah. Don't box want to waste prototypes. Box prototypes, so we got one with the Undead Princess here. What's this one? Uh, that's the bigger version. Okay. Uh, so we're still working, this is a work in progress and it's not yeah. finished yet. But you have to finish it very soon, I think. Eh? Yeah, quite. Yeah, looks good. All right, thank you, good. No problem. Come on, Edgar, you can say it. All I'm right, I'm responsible for the AI. <laughs> <laughs> He's the man. I'm uh, quickly testing uh, the new team behavior that I put in. Ah. Well, it's basically, I'm trying to make sure that, um, as you can see here, that they don't just move uh, one by one, but that they stick together. Are, is it actually going to be a, a, com a complicated AI, a challenging AI? Oh yeah, definitely. It will definitely be challenging. Yeah? I, I feel like God when I wake up. Because it's really turning alive. You heard it here first. Edgar <laughs> is the one. You think that the players will not figure out a way of defeating your AI? I am. Not. <laughs> You're sure that your AI will be beating the, the, the players, I'm whatever. Sure, I'm sure some players can beat it, but <laughs> uh, most of people here at the office are having fun with it. Okay, so it's a challenging AI that is also fun. Cool. So let's have a look at how the other portion of the AI goes, because this is the combat AI, but obviously we also have the turn-based AI. Yeah. Hi, Sebastian. Hello. What are you doing? Uh, at the moment, I'm creating the AI for the strategy map. All right, so we're looking at an accelerated version of AIs playing against each other? Yep. Two player match? Yep. So, would you say this is a fun AI, a challenging AI? Uh, yes, this is very fun to play against because it expands very quickly. Um, it's not really hard at the moment because it's very defensive, um, but on implementing some other strategies that will increase the, the attack. Gameplay. Yeah, the gameplay. So you'll have multiple AIs basically, and so players will have to deal with those in the single player campaign, and then in skirmish or multiplayer you can just select which AI to play against. Yep. So you're fairly confident that you're going to have a okay. pleasurable AI, yep. an AI that is fun to play. Yep. Right, I look forward to those results. Okay, let's move on. Hi Bert. Hi Sven. What are you doing? Well, uh, we're getting in the final months of this project, of course, so I'm basically following up most of my programmers, if they are doing their job right, if the bugs are being fixed, uh, if QA is reporting all bugs that we need, stuff like that. So mostly planning and bug fixing. Okay, so how's the bug list going? It's uh, growing and shrinking, uh, yeah, well but it's manageable. Annoying. We don't have major uh, stability problems, we don't have major networking problems, so... It's looking it good. Should, it lo it's looking okay. Yeah. All right, thank you very much. Yep. Jan, 
What are you doing on Dragon Commander? I thought you were supposed to be completely on original sin right now. Um, yes, but there are still a couple of things to finish up, um, such as the Rebel on Times here, and that's and what I'm you doing couldn't right resist, now. could you? I could not resist. You obviously had a very hard job on finishing Dragon Commander. Jan spent one month, I think. Something like that, yes. Locked up in a small hotel room somewhere in London. In London, London yes. And yeah. what were you doing when you were there? Visiting museums. <laughs> <laughs> and other than visiting museums, what were you doing? Um, well, writing and especially voice recording. Uh, a lot yeah. of voice recordings. I think exactly. This is the game which had most voice recordings that we've ever done. Like uh, yeah, I think it'll become yeah. pretty close. Yeah. yeah. When Jan came back from London. He was like, "Ooh!" And why was that? Why were you floating? Because there was some actors that told you something. They were forced to. Say, no, it's your way is better. Funnily yeah. enough, writer. Thank you very much. <laughs> Finally, Thomas caught something worthy on his camera. The <laughs> writer is amazing. <laughs> see? Thank you. It was very gratifying to see that they uh, really enjoyed the texts mm -hmm. um, and they really got into the characters, so that's fantastic. And um, you yeah, know, they really. The cool thing was they obviously. The, well, they really loved the game, even though they didn't actually play it. But just by getting into the characters, um, they could see that we were doing something special. Yes, I think I mean, that is actually... If there's one thing that everybody here at Learning agrees, which is a rare thing, it is that the quality of the writing is exceptional. And uh, that makes him float. Yeah, you can see him float. Yes. <laughs> All right, let's talk to Bert. Okay. Thank you, Bert. <laughs> Guillaume, yes. what are you doing? I'm doing effects. You're doing the effects on Dragon Commander. As a matter of fact, I believe you did all of the effects. All of the effects. All, all of the effects. All so 350 and a few. Uh, How many? 350 since. Uh, 350. That of course has to do with the fact that this game has quite a lot of technology oh. and upgrades. Yeah, that's exactly it. Yes, the unit sorry. has so many up upgrades and skills, and same yeah. for the dragons. So. All right. So what's your favorite one? My favorite one. Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> you have no idea which one is your favorite. Okay, which no, is your yeah. least favorite one? This favorite one is probably the explosions, because there are so many explosions to do that it's all minor tweaking. Uh, yeah, so you, because you have to make them a variable also. Exactly, a depending on the size of the unit. All right. okay. Thank you, Guillaume. No problem. Let's go to Thais. Hello, Thais. Hello, Sven. What are you doing? I'm playing uh, Dragon Commander with, uh, with Vincent. All right. So is there any winning strategies you want to communicate? Uh, make sure you upgrade your units regularly mm. and have enough recruitment centers around. Okay, you enough need enough resources, you need the right technology, and you need to be sure that you attack the enemy. Well, that makes yeah. sense. Cool. Well, I hope that you. That's, it looks like Vincent is winning, actually. Yeah, now he is. All right, make the best win. Okay, thank you, Tess. Hopefully. No problem. That uh, okay. Yeah, I know that. What's happening? Well, the unit is, well, basically it's just ping pong. This is Edgar's fantastic combat AI, right? <laughs> yeah, but apparently he can't decide what he wants to do. Can you explain this, Edgar? <laughs> <laughs> we have you on tape. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I feel like God when I make it, because it's, it's patrolling. <laughs> ah, yes. Can we have a look at what it is defending? Oh, yes. Some it's clearly of... important grass over there. It's a, yeah, it's a choke point. <laughs> 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 it looks like a choke point. Alright, so we still have some stuff to tweak, basically. Yeah. Okay, so, right, we're not finished yet, but it's getting there. It's getting there. Right. It's whispered that when a woman sought the company of another than her husband, fat, drunken swine, the lot of them, he has the right, the right, to take her into the woods and leave her for the wolves to feast on.